Hello, I'm Annika. Welcome to 5 Minutes with Edel Musk. Um, Edel, uh, there's a lot of people that ask about your childhood years. Yeah. And what was the influences that were on you? Can we just start with where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, let me first start by saying that uh, I've had some people commenting on this channel saying that I'm uh, trying to live off my son's fame. This is laughable. I mean, uh, I was uh, well known in this country long before, uh, before, and certainly in this country, long before uh, uh, any of this happened. And, um, um, but, but I have had hundreds of questions uh, posed to me by people in all sorts of ways. And so what I'm trying to do is just answer them. You know, it's just uh, people are, have asked me hundreds and hundreds of questions. And so I'm just answering them, that's all. Okay, so, so where was I born? I was born in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, so was Elon. So was my dad. Oh. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, a, an extraordinary place. One of the world's historic centers. And your mom? Where were your mom born? My mother was born in Liverpool in England. Okay. And at that stage, what was the backdrop of the political arenas in the countries where you grew up? I mean, you grew up in, in UK and in South Africa, or mainly in South Africa. What was the political background in your childhood years? Well, um, yes, my uh, early years, very young years, I mean, you know, I was part of the refugee community in uh, England. Uh, I beg your pardon, in South Africa. Uh, in Hillbrow, which is where all the refugees and new immigrants came after the Second World War. In Johannesburg, yeah. In Hillbrow. And it was a big, very, very big mixing, melting mixing pot, or whatever you want to call it, of people from all over the world. And so I was exposed to, as a little child, I was exposed to people from France, Ireland, um, England especially, uh, a lot. And uh, they, we, my parents were very poor and they we we lived in a boarding house and my parents were like the richest people in the boarding house because we had two rooms and uh, the one room they used as a lounge and so in the evenings um all the friends all the other refugees would gather in my parents little lounge and uh because that's where they could and um sing and and, and sing all their songs and my mother could play the f piano by ear and all that sort of stuff and um and I would, uh, my, my bed was for, the, until I was 10 years old, I didn't have a bed. I didn't have a bedroom. I didn't have a bed. I only had a couch. And uh, the couch was, which was used by the adults. So I couldn't go to sleep until they left. And so I slept under the table of the lounge on a, uh, with my blanket and pillow. And uh, I was able to listen to the adults talking all all night and and especially sometimes they would bang the table you know especially the irishman you know bang and uh and that would like you know and then making points and they would argue and so i sort of learned a lot listening to the yes. adults because normally the children were not were not exposed to adult talk you know yeah. of course people didn't use foul language in those days at all so it wasn't uh that i was exposed to anything like that you know yeah. they, they they really um were fascinating people who later, be, some of them became managing directors of big companies. And How so. old were you when you had, uh, could listen to that conversation? Uh, it was in my early primary school years um, that that took place. And um, I, um, my mother and father, uh, my mother was a very go-getter. Uh, my father was an extremely clever man who was born in the wrong time, unfortunately for him. He would have been a programmer today, or coder, or whatever you call it. But um, I'll talk about him later if you ask me. And um, the um, uh, what, what? What is the question? Uh, yeah, the age that you. Oh, oh yes. And so my mother left my father uh, at one point um, uh, to go back to England, and uh, she took my brother and my, me back to England. So we went to stay in England. And so I spent quite some time in England as a little boy. And um, okay. there I learned a great deal. That was very big influence on me. The gentleness of the English people, the kindness to children, which was not uh, evident in South Africa. And um, even though we lived on rations and things, I don't remember 
ever having a bad meal. We never had a bathroom in England. We used to have a bath every Saturday night in a copper tub. And it was some of the best days I ever had as, as a youngster. And then my mother and father made up and she came back to South Africa and they bought a house and finally and uh, you know and I did my high schooling here and so on. Yeah. So um, if it was such difficult times were your parents very much busy? Were they busy with you? Were they busy with their own no, up a career or in those make days, a living? In those days uh, people were desperate. I mean uh, you know it was very very difficult. There's a very big misunderstanding that uh, they think white people in South Africa lived a very um, high life. That's not true. Uh, the majority of uh, the white South Africans lived a very, um, you know, on the bread line sort of thing. I mean, it was not, it was not, it was, there were far more people, poor people than there were, you know, people with means. And, um, yeah, so. Uh, Did you, were you aware as a child that you are poor? Yes, I was aware that we were not well off. Um, I, uh, on one occasion, I <coughs> we're living in Hillbrow. I, I realized, I thought, wait a minute, if I'm going to dress up as a clown or something, and then I'm going to take a tin in, and I'm going to, uh, you know, sort of, I put my pajama pants on and made myself up to look like a clown, and I, 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 I took a can and went like bare feet in the, uh, to the, they had trams then, you know, trams electric trams and a lot of people and then I would like uh, basically beg you know I mean <laughs> although you know anyway they used to you know they would put uh, truffins it was called in those days three cents in my tin a few of them you know that was fantastic and, um, and then one day my mom got off the tram <laughs> and she said hey what are you doing <laughs> so then I got a hiding you know but uh, that was kind of normal, you know, to get a hiding there in those days. If you didn't get a hiding, you know, then you thought, well, something wrong with your parents. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did your mom do to, take, to try and make a living? My mother was an exceptionally uh, talented woman. Uh, she only had uh, grade uh, seven, grade eight. No, grade, grade six or seven. And she was forced out of school at the start of the Second World War. And she went to uh, became a she became a, a stitcher of stitching fabric onto uh, British fighter planes, and she was very good at that. And she, you know, she started getting good pay. So she became uh, uh, she's a very capable person. Very. In fact, it's quite funny. You know, a little not long ago, I was saying to my brother, who's a medical specialist, that, um, um, and I think that explains a lot. My brother's a medical specialist. Um, uh, and a very good one. And um, I was saying to my brother that um, women, I was, I was in a bit of a mood a little while ago. You know, women, are there, there's no intelligent women in this world. I mean, there are no intelligent women. And then my brother over the phone said to me, what about mommy? So that, oh yeah, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> hey, well, um, I'm not sure whether I should do it now or for the next one. Um, but let's do it now. Um, what influence do you think that your mom had on um, your view, perception of mom, of, oh. of women? Oh, no. Oh, oh you mean later on? You're much mm. later. My mother was very skeptical about, you know, she would like very critical of women and, and, and she would say, you know, that's not, a, that's not a good woman and that's a trashy woman. And, that, you know, she was, she was straightforward, you know, on that kind of issue. And uh, my mother was very straightforward, you know, and uh, very helpful, very helpful, um, and uh, very knowledgeable. And she, she, you know, you could you could basically bank her advice. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but she oh. loved me, and she, you know, uh, so I don't know. Anyway, no, her. You, no, you also said she liked um, certain qualities of Haida. Oh wife. yes, yes, she she liked the spark in Haida very no. much. In fact, the first time I introduced them to each other, uh, my mom came over to my home in Victoria and Ada came and I, she was going to meet my mother and Ada, very sparky, very, very beautiful girl. Um, and, uh, you know, she's the, always been the center of attention and, you know, now I knew she was going to meet my mother, you know, and my mother's, you know, <laughs> could be quite, quite strange sometimes. Anyway, 
So what I did is I, I poured the, both a sort of uh, whiskey and soda, but I really loaded the whiskey, you see. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, they drank this. Boy, were they on good terms. We went, we went out to eat. They were like, uh, you know, singing buddies, you know. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, okay. that was funny. Okay, that's great. I think let's, uh, this is part one. Please follow up part two about Errol's childhood years in the next videos.